Coming up on today's show, Elon Musk says that your autopilot equipped Tesla will soon be able to commute to work without requiring any input from you at all. Porsche says its all electric Taycan is sold out for the first year of production. And a Tesla Model 3 performance sets a brand new production electric car record at the WeatherTech Raceway Laguna Seca in California. These stories and more coming next. Happy Saturday, folks. It's hard to believe that we're nearly at the end of the year, but despite everyone ramping down for the holidays, there's still a lot going on in the world of cleaner, greener, safer and smarter transportation. But before I get to that, a little correction on a video from earlier this week in which I said that tax credits for EVs in the US ramped down in the year following the sale of the 200,000th car. That's not true. Full tax credits continue for the quarter in which the target is hit, plus one additional quarter before ramping down after that. I'm sorry for the confusion, and thanks to those of you who let me know I'd made this rather big blunder. Tesla might be busy getting as many cars to customers over the next few weeks in order to get them in that tax credit eligibility, but it's also been busy working on future releases of its autopilot software. And says Elon Musk earlier this week on Twitter, Tesla's built in the past two years will very soon be able to go from your garage at home to parking at work. In other words, tackle your daily commute with no input from you at all. Quote, definitely try navigate on autopilot. It will blow your mind, Musk said in a preceding tweet. Let me know if you can and do. Sometimes when preparing this show, we have a breaking news story that just has to go in. And this week is one example, with Hyundai just announcing official pricing of the Kona Electric in the US. Priced from $36,450 US dollars before incentives, this well-equipped crossover offers an EPA-approved 258 miles of range per charge, 100 kilowatt DC quick charging capability, and while I've not driven it yet, is going to give the Bolt EV, which is $200 or so cheaper, but offers less standard fit items and range, a real run for its money. It's time for the battle of the mid-price long-range EVs to begin. If you're wondering what to do this weekend, then maybe it's worth checking out the first race of the all-new Formula E season, which should be in full swing around this time the episode airs. Unlike previous years, where battery designs meant drivers had to swap cars mid-race, this year sees a brand new, larger capacity battery that can last the whole race. There's a slew of new teams and race drivers, including the Formula E debut of my buddy Alexander Sims from the UK. So make sure you get involved and good luck to everyone this season. It may be rolling out its Kona Electric around the world, but Hyundai has also been preparing its Nexo fuel cell SUV for launch in limited markets in the US. The Nexo is said to be a decent drive, offering a claimed range of 380 miles per fill, and you can buy it outright. But it's just announced starting sticker price of $59,345, about the same price as a Toyota Mirai, and limited refueling options, just 35 stations in the whole of the state of California, mean very few people are likely to plunk down the cash for one, especially with the just-priced Kona Electric offering more practicality for less. It's official. Porsche has now sold out of the entire first year production of its Taycan electric sports sedan. At least that's according to Porsche CEO Oliver Bloom, who told CNET earlier this month that if everyone who pre-ordered the car ends up buying it, then it will have sold up its entire first year allocation. Europe and the US are expected to get the lion's share of models, although it appears that getting one on the wait list isn't as easy in some countries as it is in others. Either way, while many do prefer a Tesla, it seems Porsche has enough customers willing and able to stump up the cash for its first EV. BMW is full steam ahead with its electrification push, and this week it announced a further investment to the tune of a quarter billion dollars at its Munich production facility in order to ready production lines for the upcoming BMW i4. In announcing the investment, BMW says its Munich factory would require extensive reworking in order to make i4 production a reality, including new sub-production lines, so that it can make i4s on the same main production line as other planned models. 
Elon Musk made an appearance on 60 Minutes last weekend talking about a whole range of things from Twitter and Tesla's hellish summer to the SEC and possibly buying GM production facilities. The interview itself was pretty good, but Musk took to Twitter shortly after it aired to dispute CBS's edit of the original interview, which cut out what Musk had to say about the hiring of Robin Danholm as chair of Tesla's board and made him sound a little, well cocky. As a journalist, I feel obliged to note it's hard to include full unedited interviews on air, but it's also not okay to change the narrative in the edit booth. Here's hoping in the future that edits are mutually agreed on. Last week, we shared video of the official crash testing of the Jaguar I-Pace by Euro NCAP, a car which I can categorically say I'm not going to be giving a review of anytime soon because Jaguar has told me it doesn't have a press car I can borrow. Anyway, back to crash testing, and this week it's the turn of the Mercedes-Benz EQC SUV. The car isn't due to launch until next year, and there are internal Mercedes-Benz tests that it's published rather than official Euro NCAP ones. But, says Benz, it's a demonstration of how well its first electric SUV performs in a crash. I'm going to wait and see what official crash tests say, though, before making my mind up. Alongside everything else it's been doing, Tesla's continued refining prototype semis, driving across the US and using them to transport batteries between Tesla's Gigafactory in Reno, Nevada and its production lines in Fremont, California. This week, a black Tesla semi was spotted getting a quick charge at a Tesla supercharger by Model X owner Nader Assemi, who filmed the full-size rig backing up to the Kettleman City supercharger. Apparently, the truck hooked up to five superchargers at the same time, which translates to an instantaneous charge rate in excess of half a megawatt. That's some pretty big electron flow. Elon Musk may be willing to praise General Motors for announcing its pivot to and heavier investment in electric vehicles, but US President Donald Trump continued his tirade against the US company this week, stating on Thursday that GM's shift to electric vehicles is, quote, not going to work. Putting the screws on GM with more trade deals designed to stop it making cars outside the US, Trump is essentially trying to bully GM into keeping its current lineup and production plans. But I just don't see GM changing its mind just to please him. Do you? And now it's time for those short shorts. Links are below if you want to follow these stories more in depth. Researchers from Honda, Caltech and NASA have announced a fluoride ion battery pack that can operate at room temperature. Fluoride is almost twice as common as lithium and say researchers could offer 10 times the energy density of lithium in a battery. Testing continues. Rivian, whose R1T and R1S broke cover at the LA Auto Show last month, may be bringing its own vehicles to market, but it may also be about to sell its drivetrain tech to Pininfarina, which is rumored to be developing an all-electric SUV called the PF1. It's only a report, but if true, it could make for one very impressive car from the famous company. Uber has restarted testing of autonomous vehicles following the fatal accident which killed a cyclist in March this year. Pittsburgh test fleets will only be allowed to operate in daylight at speeds below 25 miles per hour, with two operators monitoring the car at all times. Investigators are looking into a fire which destroyed a Jaguar I-Pace in Europe this week. The front end of the car was completely obliterated, but it's not clear if the car or an external source is to blame for the blaze. Either way, battery electric fires are statistically far, far less common than internal combustion engine ones. After years of flip-flopping on electric vehicles, Nissan's luxury brand Infiniti has published sneak peeks of an all-electric crossover that it will debut at the Detroit Auto Show in January. It's not clear if this vehicle is near to production or just a concept, but we'll find out more in the new year. Pininfarina's high-performance electric hypercar, previously known as the PF0, has now been given an official name, the Pininfarina Batista, after the brand's founder, Batista Farina. It's going to be produced in limited numbers, and it promises nearly 2,000 horsepower. British firm Lotus, which hails from my home county of Norfolk, may have helped Tesla bring its roadster to market, but since then, it's been quiet on EVs. That's going to change, says Autocar, claiming that there's plans for a two million pound electric hypercar in the works. You best start saving. The chief engineer responsible for both the fifth and sixth generations of the Chevy Camaro will be taking up a new job in January as chief engineer at GM's all-new electric vehicle division. GM says it wants its best engineers working on electric vehicles, and I think this move is a good choice. 
Porsche and BMW demonstrated the first public rapid charging session at 450 kilowatts this week. The tech isn't quite market ready yet, but at 450 kilowatts, you can add 62 miles, 100 kilometers of range in just three minutes. Sourcing lithium for lithium ion battery packs is both an ethical and logistical challenge, but a consortium of German car companies have just signed a massive deal this week with Bolivia to mine and refine 40,000 metric tons of lithium from Bolivia per year. Let's hope it's done in an environmentally and ethically responsible way. The EU currently has the current toughest carbon dioxide emission limits for cars in the world. And a just published study has found that eight out of the 13 largest European auto companies are on track to exceed those limits, facing massive fines worth up to 20% of their profits in the process. They need to get making more low emission vehicles. Martin Tripp, the former Tesla employee who describes himself as a whistleblower and whom Tesla describes as a saboteur, is being sued by Tesla to the tune of $170 million. It's not clear if or when this ongoing battle will end. Volkswagen has been promising us electric vehicles for a really long time, but never really had anything to show us but prototypes. But this week, it was in South Africa testing heavily camouflaged electric cars that look a lot like the production version of the iQ. Finally, some progress. After many years of production in Spain, Renault has officially committed to moving Renault Twizy production to Korea, where the majority of Twizzies are currently sold. Twizzies will be produced by Renault Samsung and should continue sales in all of the countries that they're currently sold in. And those are your short shorts. There will be more next week. These days, pretty much every type of vehicle you can think of is being electrified and automated. And this week, John Deere took a step towards a brave new future by unveiling an all-electric 100 kilowatt autonomous tractor. Unlike most electric vehicles, though, it draws its power from the electricity grid and uses a long cable to deliver that power. Yes, I know extension cord joke time. But in a field application where the tractor is going up and down in rows or round in circles, having a long cable isn't a major issue. And farms do tend to have high power electrics anyway. The challenge I see, how you get the tractor to the field in the first place and find a place to plug in. Hmm. A couple of months ago, I asked on this channel why the Mitsubishi Outlander plug-in hybrid wasn't selling so well, and some of you gave me your ideas. Some of them revolved around advertising, so when I heard that Mitsubishi had a new ad out to promote the Outlander plug-in hybrid, complete with snow and winter sports, I just had to take a look. It's a cute ad with some famous freestyle skiers added into the mix. But rather than use the original internal combustion and electric drivetrain noises, the ad agency behind the video added a really fake set of noises. It really spoils it. And finally, the WeatherTech Raceway Laguna Seca is one of my all-time favorite race courses. And for many years, EV enthusiasts have tried to set their fastest possible times on the course. Not so long ago, Faraday Future, remember them, set a new claimed production EV record. But since the Faraday Future hasn't entered into production, well, it's a moot point. This week, however, there was a new record set by Cameron Rogers behind the wheel of a Tesla Model 3 performance. The time, 1 minute 41.28 seconds. Nice one, Cameron. And on that note, it's the end of this week's show. If you liked today's show, give us a thumbs up and share. If you didn't, give it a thumbs down and tell us why in the comments. And if you'd like to support us, well, why not follow one of the links in the description? Don't forget too that there's a new Discord server that you can join for the channel. The link's down in the description as well. That's it. Have a fantastic weekend. Thanks for joining me. And don't forget to be better kinder and smarter to one another. Keep evolving.